Welcome to this week's edition of Ask an MS Expert. I'm John Strum, and I'm the host of the Real Talk MS podcast. Each week, Real Talk MS reaches thousands of people in more than 100 countries around the world with the news that people affected by MS really need to know. My wife, Jean, lived with progressive MS for 23 years, so I've had a front row seat experiencing all the ways that MS can impact a family. I'm a past member of the International Progressive MS Alliance Scientific Steering Committee, and currently I serve on the MS Society's Community Review of MS Research Committee. I'm a district activist leader and trustee for the National MS Society, and I chair the Society's California Government Relations Advisory Committee. The MS Society's Ask an MS Expert webcast is designed to give us a place for the MS community to connect and to connect you with experts who are ready to answer your questions on the topics that impact people affected by MS every day. Please feel free to post your comments and questions on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. MS Navigators are online throughout today's program, answering those questions and connecting you to resources. We often talk about the importance of rehabilitation therapy, and although rehabilitation can open the door to living your best life with MS, rehabilitation often gets overlooked and underutilized until a person's mobility has already been impacted by their disease course. The National MS Society's Associate Vice President of Research, Dr. Kathy Zakowski, is joining us today to talk about how prehabilitation and rehabilitation could be solutions for many people with MS to maintain their independence and their mobility longer. Dr. Zakowski is also an adjunct associate professor at the Kennedy Krieger Institute and Johns Hopkins University Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation, as well as an occupational therapist with a tremendous amount of experience working with people living with MS. Welcome, Dr. Zakowski, and thanks for being with us today. Thanks, John. Lovely to be here. You recently attended a conference that included a presentation about the research outcomes of functional recovery or rehabilitation among the MS population. Can you tell us what that research showed? Yeah, so um, this was the Global MS Summit, and uh, Dr. Lars Vid from Denmark emphasized a couple of things that I wanted to share. Um, one was the importance of adding exercise, physical activity, cognitive rehabilitation and wellness interventions as early as possible to improve impairments and overall function for people with MS. He also highlighted the need for researchers, um, sort of uh, encouraging them to have properly powered studies, which means large enough studies to really uh, test their hypothesis and to be sure to enroll people who have impairments that are relevant to their study and to embrace the complexity. In other words, a person's function is not simply a result of weakness or cognitive changes or poor motivation. It's all of these, and this requires a multidisciplinary approach to address. He also brought attention to symptoms that might be overlooked, like bladder and bowel function or swallowing and speech, and that these are important to people and shouldn't be overlooked. And last, um, really, he encouraged the idea of combining behavioral rehabilitation approaches. So combining two different rehab approaches, like a cognitive rehab approach and exercise, for example, but also combining a pharmacologic approach and a behavioral approach. And those things aren't done that often. So really um, emphasizing the importance of studying that so we understand the details of how to be most effective. You know, I always try to make sure I have my terminology right. So I'm hoping you'll explain the difference between rehabilitation, physical therapy, and general exercise. Yeah, it's, you know, it sounds, uh, they all sound quite similar, but they all are very distinct. So rehabilitation is an overall kind of an umbrella term. Um, it's an active process in which you and your team work together to identify and execute a plan to strengthen and maintain your ability to do activities um, that are important to you, whether that's at home, at work, at school, or in your community. And the goal of rehab is to help you do the activities you want, despite having MS. So you might need rehabilitation throughout your life, and it may look different depending on the type of MS you have, 
and the symptoms you're experiencing throughout your life. Now, by contrast, physical therapy is a branch of uh, one of the disciplines within rehabilitation. And a physical therapist will address your body's ability to move and function with particular emphasis on walking, strength training, balance, posture, fatigue, and pain, to name a few. Um, and they will try to help you by providing a very specific exercise program, um, help you with walking training, um, or even training in how to use walking aids. Um, and the goal with physical therapy is to promote independence and safety um, so that you can uh, function optimally. Now, general exercise isn't really rehabilitation and it isn't physical therapy, but it sounds like they're related, right? So exercise is a form of leisure time physical activity. And it's defined as it's performed repeatedly over an extended period of time with a specific external objective. I wanna walk for 20 minutes at this speed, for example. So that's very different than um, what a physical therapist will give you. They will give you more specific details about your walking, about the quality of your walking. Um, and they may prescribe specific exercises to improve your walking, for example, or to improve your arm function. And exercise is something a physical therapist may prescribe, but also exercise is something we all do um, without the guidance of a physical therapist at times. It's also often included as part of your rehabilitation. So they're all related, but they do have very specific uh, goals or definitions. You know, we often hear about the importance of early intervention, but I'm curious, what does that mean for someone who, for instance, has lived with MS for many years and currently has limited mobility? Can they still benefit from rehabilitation therapy? Yeah, there's a lot of attention now on the importance of early intervention. And in general, that means kind of the first five years after diagnosis. <clears throat> and we now know that long-term accumulation of symptoms can have profound consequences for people with MS. And that um, impairments or symptoms may present at a very early time point of the disease. But realistically, we need to start now. So the science shows that even people who have had MS for many years can improve strength, endurance, and even make cognitive gains. And so rehabilitation professionals can offer strategies to help compensate for limitations for areas that are not showing enough improvement. So there are two reasons, I think, to, um, to really emphasize this idea of early intervention, to make the gains that are possible for you, but also to help you compensate in a way that allows you to stay as independent as possible. So the bottom line is to start now, wherever you're at, right? Yeah, definitely, right. You know, appropriate exercise at any stage can help. So um, whether it's upper extremity function or lower extremity function, there are, there are things that can be done right now for anyone with MS. And so I really encourage you to, to start now. You know, we've heard from Darren, who tells us that he struggles with his hand dexterity and strength. And Darren wants to know which functions have been reported to have been recovered through exercise. Um, so studies are showing that, um, you know, those that are focused on upper extremity function, that both strength and coordination or dexterity um, can be improved through targeted exercise. So one study showed that, you know, using video gaming, um, that targeted hand function, this was done twice a week, for an hour over 10 weeks, and they found improvements in hand um, and finger coordination. Another study showed improvements in hand dexterity after aquatic exercise, which was a little surprising to me because you think aquatic exercise would be large muscle groups um, for your legs and your trunk. But what they found is that it did improve trunk control, but it also, the, the types of exercises they were doing in the water helped with hand dexterity. And then strength training will, of course, um, help you to gain strength um, in your in your hand, um, but won't focus as much on the coordination piece. So there's plenty of evidence to suggest that this is worth trying. Um, but again, doing it under the guidance of an expert who can who can really tell you how best um, to do this would be important. Tamara asked which types of exercise would be best for improving her cognition, and are those exercises different from what's recommended to improve? physical function? 
So studies examining the, the, the efficacy or how effective cognitive rehab is in MS have been more frequent in recent years. And a few, um, there are a few cognitive rehab programs that have really been identified. So for example, one is called the Kessler Foundation Story Memory Technique. This is a memory retraining protocol where participants are taught to facilitate new learning by utilizing context and imagery. So it relies on images that are connected together in an interesting and, and memorable story to make it easier to remember. This has been shown to be very effective and can be worked on virtually. Another example might be kind of group-based community programs that teach strategies to improve the management of cognitive um, changes in MS. Now there is evidence that, that shows that exercise, even just a few, a single bout of exercise um, can, can, um, can cause changes in, in cognition in pe for people with MS. So the, what's been limited over all the studies since like 2016 have supported this idea that exercise has a positive effect on cognition. Um, these studies have in general been small. So we're trying, we're really pushing to have larger studies um, but these studies have reported that exercise training is most effective when it involves a wide variety of interventions. So just doing the same repetitions um, each time is not going to be as effective, um, but doing things that involve different types of exercise um, might be effective. And even combining that with some of the cognitive rehabilitation training techniques might be the most effective. But again, it's early times in terms of how much evidence we have to support exactly what you should be doing. We know in general, these are really important concepts and they are effective, but knowing exactly what to tell one person versus another, that's the area that I think we're still pretty um, early on and we need more research to support that. Exercise and functional recovery are a, a large component of prehabilitation and rehabilitation services that can help someone maintain their mobility and improve their quality of life. So I'd like to talk a little more about the kinds of services that are available to people with MS. And I know you have extensive experience in this field from your work as an occupational therapist and now leading research at the MS Society. So first, I'm hoping you'll explain the difference between prehabilitation and rehabilitation. Yeah, rehabilitation is very near and dear to my heart. I think there's a lot to gain from this and um, you know, we're just scratching the surface research-wise. But if I were to just define rehabilitation, you know, it's it's intermittent or ongoing use of interdisciplinary strategies um, to regain or maintain your best physical function, to promote your best functional independence, to prevent complications of your health, and to improve your overall quality of life. And all parts of your life can be affected by rehabilitation, just as all parts of your life often can be affected by MS. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the goal of rehab is to help you do the activities you wanna do despite having MS. Now, prehabilitation is a little different and it's been gaining a lot of uh, traction lately too. So it's focused on improving a person's functional capacity before a stressor. So in this case, before an MS diagnosis or before a big relapse, um, um, and that would be the stressor. So the goal of prehabilitation is to work towards the best possible function now so that impairments that follow um, um, start from a higher level. So for example, this concept of cognitive reserve is often discussed. So a cognitive reserve, that hypothesis is that Engagement in higher levels of intellectual enrichment, so lots of, uh, lots of games that you do um, thinking-wise, will minimize the impact of MS-related neural damage on cognitive functioning. And data suggests that people with MS who have higher cognitive reserve demonstrate more preserved functional connectivity, despite the accumulation of atrophy in the brain, which we know is so common. Um, so this idea of cognitive reserve is really important. Um, also, many of the interventions that are included in prehabilitation programs are, are common sense, but something you, could, you just need to be reminded about. So staying physically active, having a healthy diet, all of those, both of those things can promote brain health, 
eating a balanced diet we know can improve quality of life in people with MS. We know from recent studies that affects fatigue. Um, in addition, the focus on kind of personalizing the program to you know, the, the prehabilitation program that you do to your specific needs um, not only provides the best benefits, but it gives you the most empowerment to know that you're doing something for your health now before whatever's going to happen in the future is going to happen. If someone living with MS wants to find a healthcare professional in prehabilitation or rehabilitation, what type of specialist should they be looking for? Yeah, there are a lot of different specialty areas, and I, I think it's really important. So the neurologist um, is really important as um, your primary medical provider. But in terms of rehabilitation or prehabilitation, there are experts that have been trained in very distinct areas. So there's physical therapy, really focused on physical wellness. There's occupational therapy, and that is that group is really focused on, you know, trying to allow you to um, break up, you know, break apart tasks that are really difficult for you and put them back together in a way that you can do them. So really adapting tasks for you. Um, speech therapy, which really focuses on um, speech, language, and swallowing issues. But there are others. So there are social workers. They really help us identify resources in your community, for example. Then there are psychologists and there are specific neuropsychologists that could be very helpful. Um, and in addition, you know, a urologist, someone who's very specialized in understanding um, um, bowel and bladder function. There's nurses um, and uh, physiatrists, so physicians that are that are more focused on rehabilitation. So it really, this is what we mean by multidisciplinary. Is it just really there are there are specialty areas that people have taken a lot of time to be educated and trained in, and they're there to to help make. Um, help you address the issues that are important to you. We heard from Paige and Paige tells us she's lived with relapsing remitting MS for 10 years. She regularly takes her disease modifying therapy and tries to live a healthy lifestyle, which has helped her feel generally stable with her MS. So given her current status, Paige wants to know why she should st would still be a good candidate for prehabilitation services. Yeah, it's a really good question because I think many people um, think, you know, everything's stable. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And there is some benefit to that. But the goal with prehabilitation, remember, is to optimize your health and function now in preparation for what comes next. So since we don't know what's coming next, establishing a baseline with rehabilitation providers offers an opportunity. So often we know often small changes um, that might not even initially be noticed by a person exist. But if you can address them early, then you can avoid bigger problems. So for example, you might notice that, you know, you might lose your balance a little bit more than usual, but you know, that's just normal aging. Or you might think, you know, I'm losing my balance, but I always catch myself. So it's really not a problem. I don't really want to go and, you know, um, waste my time seeing a, a rehab provider yet. I don't need one. But it might be that a baseline evaluation by a physical therapist may show subtle changes in sensation, for example, that put you at a higher risk for falling. And if you fall, you can break a bone or hurt your head. But if you can avoid falling by going to the physical therapist and doing a few things that can increase your strength or help you compensate, that's the way that we can prehabilitate somebody. So it's services start with an evaluation to determine what areas really a, a person needs work in. Wanda tells us that she has mobility limitations and she feels it would be too much effort for her to go to a physical location for one of these evaluations. Does Wanda have other options for both an initial evaluation and ongoing services? Yes, there are. Um, so I would say the silver lining of COVID may be the advancement of telemedicine. So the use of virtual medical evaluations are much more common now and offer people the opportunity to benefit from rehabilitation services that may not be available to you just because of your geographic location or because of the difficulty it is in getting out of your house. So I would encourage um, you to ask questions, um, reach out to your rehabilitation providers, asking if virtual evaluations and treatment are a possibility in your area. 
if you don't, if you don't get answers that way, I would go to your, your neurologist and ask them, you know, are there rehabilitation providers in the area or further away that, that would allow me to do a virtual um, evaluation or virtual um, sessions to allow me to address some of my issues? Well, thank you for taking us through the basics of prehabilitation and rehabilitation services that are available for people living with MS. We heard from Carlos, who reports that MS-related cognitive issues and brain fog are starting to affect his conversations and his independent lifestyle at home. What prehabilitation or rehabilitation specialists might Carlos benefit from seeing? So two come to mind. So I would say first, a neuropsychologist. So these are psychologists specially trained to assess thinking, reasoning, and concentration symptoms, also commonly a problem for people with MS. Um, and there's specialized training for neuropsychologists um, specific to MS. Speech therapists also in some, um, in some medical areas will also screen for and treat people um, addressing cognitive symptoms like um, Carlos is describing. So either would be appropriate and it's good to know you might have two options in case one is more available in your area. Dave tells us he was just diagnosed with primary progressive MS and he's still physically active, but he's increasingly feeling challenged when he has to walk long distances. What services should Dave be seeking now to help maintain his independence? Yeah, I would recommend that you seek out the care of a physical therapist who is familiar with MS. So a physical therapist will look at how you get up and down from a chair or the floor, how you move around in bed, how you walk on flat surfaces or climb stairs, as well as how stable you are when you do all of these activities. And so the, the point of, of doing all of that is they can really figure out what's, what's breaking down that's making you feel challenged when you walk longer distances. What, what do we need to work on? Is it strength? Is it endurance? Um, and a physical therapist is really very highly qualified for that. Shelly says MS hasn't really affected her physical mobility much but she sometimes finds herself choking a little or coughing to catch her breath while she's eating or drinking. Is there a specialist that could work with Shelly on this? Yes, yeah, so a speech language pathologist will screen for swallowing difficulties, speech problems and voice changes, as well as thinking skills. So um, they are trained to consider whether or not adaptive equipment might help you and make those recommendations. They may also recommend additional tests to take a closer look at your ability to swallow, um, but they are definitely um, trained in this, those particular areas and, and they understand MS. So that combination puts you in really, really good hands. Leah tells us she's worried about being denied coverage for prehabilitation services. What can Leah expect as she navigates insurance and is this process different from getting coverage for rehabilitation services? So this is a very loaded question. So it really um, largely depends on the type of insurance you have and uh, what state you're in in the United States. I would recommend um, reaching out to the MS Society's navigator system. They can look at your specific um, details and be able to give you the best recommendations. In general, I will tell you that most insurance, I think all insurance that I've ever um, worked with will include a number of sessions with physical therapy and occupational therapy, and typically a couple for speech language pathology. Now there might be a copay involved um, and there might be a limited number of sessions per year, but MS does come with, um, the diagnosis of MS typically comes with a, set, a number of sessions with those three special specialty areas. Um, and it's just important you should, I would recommend, you know, look, in, look at your insurance and see what they do provide because, it, it, you know, utilizing that benefit would be, could be very helpful to many people. Well, you've shared some really great information with us today, Dr. Zakowski, and, and, and really, I think, opened our eyes to the, the value and benefit of being proactive in seeking some of those prehabilitation services. L let me ask you, what would you say are the top three takeaways that you'd like our viewers to remember? Yeah, I think the first would be to um, recognize that it's never too late. So prehabilitation, I think, 
um, has a message of, you know, if you already have been diagnosed for several years, it's too late, but that isn't the case. Um, it might be, again, think of pre prehabilitation as we want to maximize what you have now in, so that you're ready for whatever comes next. My um, second would be um, explore the rehabilitation opportunities that you have, whether it's your insurance coverage, that's one step of it, right? So we all have to figure out financially how to cover that. Um, but also looking at around your area, what rehabilitation um, options are available. Look for rehab specialists that have some training in MS. And if that's too detailed, even just some training in neurology would be my recommendation. And third, I would ask questions, talk to people in your environment, find out if they're going to see rehabilitation specialists. Do they like who they're seeing? Have they found it beneficial? Um, so, and asking your neurologist, emphasizing, you know, I'm, I'm still interested in trying this. This idea of prehabilitation is fairly new in the MS world. So ask your neurologist, you know, I'm, I'm interested, um, are there opportunities here that I can take advantage of this prehabilitation, these prehabilitation options? Well, I want to thank everyone who submitted some excellent questions. And thank you, Dr. Zakowski, for being with us today. Thank you. Before we close, I want to remind you that the National MS Society's MS Navigator Team is your best partner when it comes to connecting you to the very best information and resources on living with MS. You can reach an MS Navigator by phone, email, or through the Society's website by chat. For information and resources on multiple sclerosis, please be sure to visit the MS Society's website. You'll find research updates and news, information on connection programs like self-help groups and MS Friends. You'll hear about ways that you can get involved, and you'll find out about upcoming events that are taking place near you. Remember, you can connect with the National MS Society and others affected by MS on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And I hope you'll join me every week on the Real Talk MS podcast, where I continue the conversation that we start here. You'll find Real Talk MS at realtalkms.com, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. I'd like to thank Dr. Zakowski for joining us today. Please remember that a recording of this webcast will be available at the Society's website at nationalmssociety.org slash msexpert, as well as on Facebook and YouTube. I hope you'll join us at this same time for next week's edition of Ask an MS Expert. You can always find our upcoming program topics on the National MS Society's website. And now I have a favor to ask each of you. Getting your feedback on today's webcast is important. So if you're watching on Facebook Live, you'll see a link to a survey pinned to the comments section. And on YouTube, you'll find that link in the program description. Completing the survey makes a real difference. The information you provide helps us continuously improve, and it helps shape future programs. The survey takes just one minute, so I hope you'll take a minute to fill it out. On behalf of Dr. Kathy Zakowski and the National MS Society, I want to thank you once again for joining us. Please stay safe and make healthy choices.